Hello and welcome back. We are for struggling filmmakers. We have been away for a while, but we are back. My name is Emma, and joined with me once more is James. Hello. Noah. Hello. Yay. And Jimmy. <laughs> Good, Good to, be to be back. So, Noah, I believe you want to kick us off with a recommendation. Oh, okay, you're not going to ask how I've been. All right. So, yes, we've been away a while. Um, seen many a film in that time period. I, I don't know when we last recorded. Was it November? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was spring... November the November the. 15th? Probably the best film during that period that I saw would be a film by the name of Sweet Smell of Success, which is a 1957 film directed by a guy called Alexander McKendrick. Features the great Tony Curtis in it and the great Burt Lancaster in it. Uh, it's just an old school uh, noir film from back in the day with two brilliant performances from those two aforementioned there. Uh, it's just brilliant. It's a newspaper film. It's quite a sleazy, quite a uh, quite a horrible film in many ways. I loved it. It was really ahead of its time, I thought. It was proper right up my street sort of thing. Always up for some Bertie Burt. What was it called again? Have I told you about my Burt Lancaster mug? <laughs> you haven't, no. <laughs> I've, one of my colleagues for Secret Santa got me a mug that's a picture of Burt Lancaster and on the back it says to Jimmy from your pal Aww. Bert. I, I've seen a lot of shit in the cinema like, recently. <laughs> that doesn't really... Re- good re- recommendation, re- that, Jimmy. You? Pick something that you liked. All right, well, the, the best thing that I've seen recently I saw at Christmas, I rewatched It's a Wonderful Life Aww. and realised that that was one of the greatest films Aww. ever made. Um, I didn't re- know how, how fantastic an actor Jim, James Stewart was, Jimmy Stewart, until I saw that film again recently. And I was moved to to the verge of tears. Luckily, my my auntie was in the room, so I felt like I couldn't actually cry. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what a what a what a great film that came out uh, at a at a time when the world probably needed films. Oh like that, well, so. hmm. that's sweet. Oh. Happy Christmas. We love we love films. I'll just go with mine. So mine is a Disney film. There's one I will mention later down the line, but um. Uh, around Christmas time, I wasn't feeling too good, and I sat and watched uh, Luca, and I Aww. really enjoyed it. I thought, oh, what a sweet little film. Although, I mean, we all know from previous episodes, my favourite Disney film is The Little Mermaid, and I thought this is just like a cool sort of reimagination of The Little Mermaid. And yeah, I liked it, is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Sometimes you need a film like that at a time when you you, you need a yeah. boost. For sure. Right, okay, so I'm going to keep it as brief as I can because I'm, I'm probably going to gush about this film later as well. Um, but I watched a film in December and the day before I watched it, I didn't even know it existed. And I was like, oh, this is going to coincide with what I'm doing with my like reviews. So I decided, you know what, I'll stick this in and I'll watch it. And it's probably the closest to a 10 out of 10 film I've seen in quite a while. Um, 10 out of 10. Is, yeah, I know which is very surprising for me because I'm very stingy with my 10 out of 10s. And it's a film called yeah. Tokyo Godfathers. Fucking excellent. It's an amazing film. Visually, it is just superb. It's uh, the same guy who did... Noah, you'll know. The same guy who did Perfect Blue. So it's the same director yeah, as that. Is, yeah. I just think that the theming in that film is also really well done. It, it's like you can watch it as just a normal film, but it actually has layers to it that you wouldn't actually expect from... A film. Well, the the brief premise is like three homeless people find a baby and they try to return it to its owner, and that's the entire film. But it it builds up to so much more than that. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Happy day. And where did you do your Christmas reviews? Where? Um, oh, where? Oh, oh, what what a great segue! Why don't you? Go where can we find more reviews from from James? Yeah. Wait, wait, you can go to James Harrison, J Harrison underscore films on Twitter. Um, also, my letterbox as well, I believe is the same handle, JH Film Feed or something. And I just. Re- you also find me there as well. You also <laughs> find Noah on there. Give his puppies as well. And wait, and I'm also on letterbox, and I'm so is Jimmy. Yeah, we're all on Letterbox, you dicks. Yeah, we're all on Letterbox, but at like different <laughs> levels of how active we are. Yeah, true. 
Which is because me and Emma don't pay for the pro. <laughs> ten, it's ten quid a year, by the way. I can't really work that into my budget right now. <laughs> what is our welcome back episode about? Welcome back episode. What is our, what is the episode about? <laughs> You what tell us, it? Emma. You tell me. <laughs> so we're going to do a roundup of last year and what we're looking forward to this year. So if you have been with us since the start, thank you very much, you will know that our very first episode was us reviewing films we were excited to see in 2021. So what better way to celebrate our first episode of 2022 being a look back of 2021 and a look forward? To 2022. It's all cyclical, isn't it? Look. All perfect. Where should we start? Should we start with the four films we talked about in that very first episode we did? Yeah. Uh, I Let's mean, I haven't up. seen my yeah. film, so... No, no, I had an entire year to prepare to go and see his film, and then he didn't watch it. What a fool he is. You only saw Candyman because we dragged okay. you along. Let's start with Candyman. Because we all went to the cinema to see that. Did oh, yeah, we? So did, long ago. did we think that so this ago. version of Candyman met up with the standards of the original? What was our? Well, like in comparison to the original, like they're going for very different things. But at the same time, the newer one is trying to be as good as the old one. It's like actively wanting to be like, well, we can't just make a film and have not have it, you know, have the lasting impact that the previous one did. So it does try a lot of different things. And I think I think towards the end, it just sort of like sputters out a little bit where it's like, and then it ends and you're like, okay. But I think the direction in it was great. I think Nia Costa did a cracking job. I'm really excited to see what she does next because like, especially the use of the mirrors in the film, I thought was great. Um, throughout it was very, very um, um, inspired. I agree. It kind of like took a different, Candyman angle and made it its own because it went from like and then uh, was it at the end where it's like oh these are all the different versions of Candyman so yeah you know this is just one version blah, 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 blah. spoiler alert yeah I, I that was one of my favorite bits it, it, I think it really faithfully built on the Candyman mythos which I think is, was a really hard tough like ask for it but I think it, it did a, a really good job of 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 building on on the original. And acknowledging it with, without trying too hard. Mm, I think it did try and replicate it a bit, I guess. But it, it did forge its own identity, I think, which was really good to see. Uh, it, it's not. It doesn't quite hold up compared to the original. I would say. I think the original is probably the best horror film of the nineties. But uh, no, I, I agree with you, James, and I agree with you, Emma, on both your points. I think visually very stunning. I think the performances were were very, very well grounded. Very, very. They lent a gravitas to uh, to the piece. I think yeah. I actually really like the ending. Is the only thing I disagree with you there, James? I I really like the final. Scene. I think it just ended kind of abruptly. Is my my only quarrel with it? Yeah, it was just I sort agree. of like, and there he is, and then it ends. Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's fair. I think there should have been more in Cabrini Green in general. Yeah. No. Right. Well, what... But that that's what about you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I had only seen the uh, original Candyman after the um, I don't know some. I think it was only like a week before we agreed to go to see the remake. Oh, I, was, I bloody loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I think it was such a. It had so much going for it. Um, Tony Todd was brilliant. It's Tony Todd, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. brilliant. What it a, is what a, fantastic. Yeah. So. Did you also know that fun fact about the clause in his contract for that? No. no. Where every time he would get stunned by the real bees, he would get ten thousand dollars. He was stunned twenty four times. I mean, oh that's, that's one way to like get someone to be okay with it. I think it was ten thousand dollars. It was something like that. I'd do that for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, what a brave man to get all those. That's really his mouth. But um, yeah, I wasn't massive on the remake. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was as scary. I think as well. I think the the original is much much got more better atmosphere and better much more scary for me. But the remake it almost looked too clean. Do you know what I mean? I feel like that might be kind of the point. That's though. what it's going for. Yeah, because the whole theme of the film is gentrification. So they're taking yeah. all like the old yeah. way of Cabrini Green and how it was, and then making it new. So I I guess in that sense, but like mm. even like the more run down parts of Cabrini Green did seem quite barren 
um, for I think what they could have been. It's also different types of horror, isn't it? The original is just like you know, atmospheric, more horrory, ho- horrory, whereas the horror. remake is more like, wow, let's look at the horror of people and that yeah. sort of thing. It's more I did thematic. like the. Um, I mean, the original was thematic. But I did like the body horror in the remake. You know, his hand. I I tell you what, I, I didn't like, and I think it's kind of potentially the, the Jordan Peele uh, influence, is like forced humour in serious horror scenes. Yeah. Like, in, particularly in that art gallery murder scene, which looked nice to, it was nice to look at. But, um... There's the bit where the the girl first gets like hooked and stabbed, and the guy's like, "Oh my god, is this real? Is this real?" And he like freaks out, and it's, it's I think it's played for last, but it like mm. oh, it really fell flat for me. It kind of ruined ruined a lot of that scene for me. But everything else in that scene was really cool, really cool. I you know, yeah, and and going going back to what you were saying a minute ago, James, on thematics, I I did really like this examination of of. You know, if we build up an urban myth or, or folklore, we, you can almost make it something real. And 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 the the danger that, um, all the power, I guess, and the danger that can come with with belief, even if something's not true. I think there's kind of like there's almost a fake news angle to that, which I thought was very cool. So, no time to die. Yeah. That is another thing we all another thing another <laughs> film all of us have seen. <laughs> um, Jimmy, it was. It was your pick, so takes away. Oh, I we I had to wait years for this film. <laughs> like twenty fifteen, the last Bond came out. Seven years, seven years. That's a third of my life I had to wait for uh, for uh, No Time to Die to come out. But um, was it worth the wait? Uh, it probably wasn't worth seven years of wait, but it was a, it was a bloody good time. I I really liked uh, what was probably. Probably, I'd say the franchise's most unique take on Bond. Um, you know, they really worked hard to make him uh, a, a full, well-rounded character. Was that character still James Bond? Many, a lot of people maybe wouldn't think so, but I, I really enjoyed it. You know, as someone who wasn't a fan of Daniel Craig massively as Bond, um, I really warmed to him in this one. I felt his his strength um, of, of of him as a performer really came through. Um, and to still be doing all the stunts and everything after after so many years of of uh, of of injuries and um, you know he's not a young man anymore was was really quite brilliant. So I, I think from a um, from a set piece point of view, from a from a character point of view, I really enjoyed it. it the the plot just falls apart. <laughs> upon any it's kind of like oh, I got <laughs> I I got scolded once when I was young, and now I'm gonna. Kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, and now for some genocide of specific races for reasons nobody yeah, can understand. Yeah. I wasn't sure what to make of Rani Malik as a villain. He's not. I don't. He's not in it a lot, really. Mm. But then, is that a good thing? I don't really know. I still haven't really decided what I thought of him. Rami Malik is weird, but not in like a threatening <laughs> yeah. way at all. Yeah. Like there's, there's no. He's lacking. Pre- I I really hate to say it because it's such a damning thing to say about an actor, but it, completely lacking in presence. Yeah, like and it was kind of like not scary right. when he was he took the child around the garden, but it low key looked like he was struggling to carry her around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but. Yeah, you you believe that that Bond's child could probably take uh, Rami Malek <laughs> yeah. in a fight. I feel like if you describe the character of what Rami Malek, what what Rami Malek's character was trying to be, it was the more like cold and calculating mm. kind of Bond villain. But because Rami Malek is doing it, mm. he doesn't seem cold. He doesn't seem very calculating. He just seems like a bit of a weird guy, and that's it. And then I like, have to give him like a weird mask as well, just to. Yeah, it make it more threatening. It was a weird mix of like <laughs> over 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 the top for a Daniel Craig film, but also like way not over the top enough for it to have worked mm. as well. Um, because it was like very ungrounded. Like the whole point of the Craig era was it it was more grounded in sort of realism. You know, it, less gadgets, less you know, massive world domination schemes, and more. more and this realism. was everything opposite. And then this one. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. But then they they almost didn't commit to it enough for it to to quite work. Certainly, uh, yeah. I can't even remember his name. And then uh, like it just ends and that's it. No more Bond. Well, I mean, like, well, I didn't in, mind, in yeah. a way, yeah. Well, in terms of like, Rami Malek's character, definitely. But like in terms of like the actual ending of the movie, it's probably its most standout aspect. I'd <laughs> say. Mm. I mean, it definitely ends the Craig it, era, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, De- defiantly. Yeah. I think if you if you buy into this sort of new version of Bond that this only this film has created, then it probably works for you. And it did it did for me, to be honest. I I you know I was getting yeah, emotional. It was Both sad. Times. Um, but I think if 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 you don't buy into that, or I don't know if you, yeah, I think I th- I think for a lot of people it probably didn't work, but. Yeah, for me, I thought it was a nice. I thought it was. I a know, it's just a miracle. Um, it ended up being a competent film with everything that happened before it, especially with Danny Boyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very... Danny Boyle. Oh, yeah, that would have been yeah. so good. Oh, yeah, um, it would. I need. But like, I mean, the most predictable though... thing about it, though, there was always going to be a long take because if you've seen True Detective season one, you know, you know that this is Carrie Joji from the. Uh, whatever his name is, this is specialty, and of course there was going to be Joy a Fukunaga. long take. That's the most predictable yeah. thing about this film. It but was a good long bad, take. Do you it mean was the a forest good long take as well? So yeah, and um, not enough Anna de Armas as well. I feel like that was on purpose, but from the fact that they put her in for like such a limited amount of time, and she was so good, then when she leaves, you're like, oh, come back. <laughs> yeah, you, you really feel like. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like it's like let's let's put her in here so we can get her on the poster. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. She then there might be some future to that character. No. Yeah, de- definitely. No, <laughs> not money penny. Is she? Well, well, th- there's no Felix Leiter anymore. Yeah. I know everyone's dead, isn't they? From like that Bond, it's going to be 007 is going to be not not Bond. M's nothing still there. Bond very fine. from very Bond's fine. past. It's there. a whole new legacy now. Yeah. Right, it's. It's full uh, reboot from this point on. It'll, it's got. It, I think. I think. I think so. I think it's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Shall we oh. move on to Noah's pick um, of June? It were no. it sweeped up a lot at the um, Baftas, didn't it? So I think it said June. I was like, when he picked this in no, June. Sorry, Dune. Dune and the sequel. No, no, you you pronounced it right. Um, June. It, me being me being thick. <laughs> I was like, and then my head went, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that came out last year. Um, yeah, so yeah. I watched it and it was okay. It was kind of, for me personally, I wouldn't say it was like an amazing film. I can see visually it was good. I could see what they were doing with the story, but I felt like it was such an empty film. And, I, and what I mean by that is that I'm not saying not a lot doesn't happen because in a way it does, but also it doesn't. It doesn't explain a lot of what's going on. And you just sort of expected to be like, okay, cool. This is what they're doing. And um, I felt like it, it missed. It missed. As well. I'm not saying like films need to have loads and loads of dialogue or like loads of ex- exposition, but I just felt like it missed a mark. It wasn't, it wasn't grounded. Like you didn't know why you should. Yeah, like I was like, so we was we saw the same click of air. Uh, we saw the same clip of Zendaya about seven times, and it was kind of like, well, <laughs> we get the point that you're seeing this girl in your dreams. Yeah, I, I, th- I completely, I, I haven't seen it, but from I from the trailer, I was like so confused that I, 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 I without any want to sort of find out more. So I, I really wasn't sad that I missed this. To be honest. I didn't buy into the world without even. Well, I, I, I didn't really try. I didn't go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> but but from from the trailer, I was like, it, it's like I can't be bothered to. Yeah, find I'm not out saying it's bad by out. any means. It's much better than the attempts previous, but I just don't think it hit the nail on the head personally. But James might have a completely different opinion. Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw it in the big old IMAX as it was meant to be seen, apparently. And yeah, it was. It was good. That's um, that's, that's about it. <laughs> it was it was very good. I feel like the issue is, um, which was kind of expected with a film that was 
even if it, if it was called Dune, everyone knows it's it's Dune Part One, even going into it. Um, yeah. And it's it's a hell of a lot of like ex. Well, even the exposition's done decently enough, but it's just a hell of a lot to put on an audience, especially for like three hours worth of movie. And then you you watch it; it's kind of like an overload of just like this is a place, these are the people, this is what they're doing, and this is where it's all going, and this is something that's happening to Paul, and he's having a dream about Zendaya, and she's going here, and it's like, oh my god, what's happening? And it's just, you're just sort of watching it, but like, even the way I've described it, it seems like it's bombarding you with stuff, but it's very slow. Yeah. There's a big old trudge, like, Mm. and every single detail is like, meticulously chosen to be, I'm assuming, exactly the way it should be from the source material. And that's why a lot of people enjoy it, because it seems to have, even though it didn't hit the nail on the head for you as a viewer, but if for like fans of Dune, I think it nailed it for that. But like general audiences, like I was speaking to a few people at work, people who I never would have expected to go and see Dune at all, um, they said they really enjoyed it. And on like the flip side, I, <laughs> my little brother... Um, he went to go see Dune knowing nothing about it, and he still attests that it was the worst cinema experience he's ever had because he hated it. Um, yeah, really, it was, it was nutty. Um, but and your brother's got really good taste <laughs> really as good taste. well because he's he no, said he, he doesn't. He, he said he loved. He does. He said he loved my <laughs> oh, <laughs> So that automatically means he's now got like <laughs> these knees. Oh, he's okay in my book. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I mean like. <laughs> I feel like that's my main critique of the film is just like, it's very overwhelming, but like that sense of being overwhelmed kind of like helps the film in a way because it makes it feel as big as it should be. Um, I think visually Denis Villeneuve does a very good job. He's a good director. What are you going to say? I mean, he he knows what he's doing. Um, I think the, uh, the cinematography uh, was also very good by Grieg Frazier. He was doing very good jobs. Well, um acting wise acting wise it was fine i think everyone played their roles well but no one really okay i i actually uh stellan scarfgard did a very good job but like everyone else was just fine I thought what about um <laughs> han zimmer is it just your classic han zimmer it, yeah, yeah. It's very good it's very loud a lot of um singing women going ha, ha, ha. Oh, like, oh, Oh, um, oh yeah! Even from the trailer, I was like, I can't put up with that. Three um, that, but... Yeah, it was all right. No, I know you yeah. didn't see it. I will. I will one why? day. You will one day. I'll, I'll go watch it with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Come, we go slugging there. So that brings us on to our final film, which only you have seen, only James. So seen. Take it away. Yeah, um, so I picked a film called Antlers, and I was like looking forward to it, thinking it would be like a sort of out of left field horror film that would actually end up being quite decent. It was directed by Scott Cooper, produced by Guillermo del Toro, had some good actors in it, and like the trailer hooked me, um, and I knew the story behind it, and that was really cool. And I was expecting it to be like somewhat decent, and I was like, oh, really looking forward to it, and it wasn't good. But yeah, I I'll, I'll probably won't go overly long about Antlers, but I thought it was visually very muddy, not very well well done in terms of visuals. Like the whole point, oh, this is the one thing that rolled me up. The trailer hooks you with like the sense of like, oh, there's a monster and you don't really see it. Um, and then with, with monster films like that, there's a big reveal at the end where you actually see what the monster is. And it's like, oh, this big, like terrifying thing. Even if it's not shown for like a major amount of time, it's still there. And with this film, because it's so dark, you can't tell what it looks like at all. And it just it feels like they teased you with this idea of like this weird Guillermo del Toro-esque designed beast. And then you can barely see him because everything's so What is it dark, a Wendigo or a Skinwalker very, well, again? It is a right. Wendigo. Um, there, there's a heavy amount of exposition about them talking about that. Um, hmm. But yeah, I feel like the character work was just a whole lot of like hitting you over the head with like this is what this character's about and this is their backstory and this is what they are and it's, it doesn't really feel very organic um i did like the vibe like small town oregon like mysteries are cool but i feel like it just could have been a whole lot better than what it ended up being so unfortunate uh but you know, you know. so uh, it was like 
Our first okay. episode of what we were looking forward to, when we actually saw them, I'd say it was a half and half success to non-success ratio. So, so, which means maybe going forward into this video, half of our uh, we're looking forward to will be good, and the other half maybe not. Shall we all pick our favourite of the four? Well, I mean, like, not all of us have seen the four, so I don't, I feel yeah. like I don't well, know how to do that. Oh, I wanted to see how wrong James was. <laughs> Why don't we pick our favourite of last year, regardless of whether or not it is the four? Oh, no, that's oh, okay. tough. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm oh no, wait, no, that's really easy. Yeah, but, okay. that's, but that's what we're about to talk about anyway. I'm so full of beef struggle, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> what? <laughs> 